they're in organised crime, they're in the money making, they're in drug supply, they're in the shootings. Put my hands up like this, said use these, shot me, blood spurt out there. We've had over a hundred biking murders Australia wide and there's been over a thousand shootings as well. There might be a few bad apples in a bunch but when they're all bad. He would always make a point to come and give me a big hug and a kiss. Why are you not taking them off the streets? What are they doing wrong? They have no morality, they have no... They don't care about the lives they destroy. So show me how this would work. goes to sleep, that's when the bikey wars begin. Almost every night, gunfire breaks out on those dark streets down there. So tonight, we're taking you on a journey deep inside that violent gang culture. Get ready, we're going to the front line. A city locked down as a body lies on the road. Linked to a turf war between outlaw motorcycle gangs. Bullets have been sprayed through homes and tattoo businesses across Sydney. If what we've seen so far is any guide, it's going to get messy. Bikies are now the most powerful gangs in this country. By their very definition, they try and exist outside of the law. Day after day, they're bringing violence and bloodshed onto our streets. But it seems finally police have decided it's time to fight back. It's 6am. The police gang squad is being briefed on its latest raids. We can just all go on mass, so just be safe, guys. OK, be safe. <laughs> it's here they prepare their missions. We certainly understand why some members of the public feel scared. But can I say and just reassure that we are working, we're very committed to stopping the violence and we will do so. Each raid is highly planned, down to the last detail. In raids on bikey suspects, any mistakes can prove deadly. On this day, they're raiding 18 separate locations across Sydney. This is a message to gang leaders. The cops mean business. They're heavily armed for good reason. The bikies are tooled up like never before. This man is a licensed armourer. He's agreed to show us the range of illegal weapons used by bikies and for me to experience their firepower. Like most people with knowledge of this underworld, he doesn't want to be identified. This first up is a uh, 9mm Glock. Probably one of the uh, world's most uh, reliable, accurate handguns. In these kind of attacks that are happening at the moment, is that is this what is being used mo mostly? It's any number of handguns or, or weapons that, uh, you know, the, the choice or uh, drive-bys. They're in the car, so, that you know, it's a... It's a choice of getting something small and light and, uh, and fast. The police say that there are hundreds of these on the, on the streets at the moment. Where are they getting them from? Um, some of them are imported, stolen from clubs. Um, you name it, they're, uh, you know, they're out there. But, um, and pretty easy to get if you, if you know who to talk to. If you know who to talk to, sure. All right, so show me how to use it. OK, I'll give you a basic demonstration of the uh, Lock 19. Pull that down, and now there is a round chamber in the barrel ready to fire. You feel quite powerful holding a gun, it's quite weird. It's quite a weird feeling. Uh, wait till you fire. Ready, fire! It's got a bit of force, doesn't it? Gun is clear. It sure does. It's late on Saturday night in Sydney's western suburbs. I've been invited into the inner sanctum. Thank you very much for having me. This is a bikey clubhouse where representatives of clubs from across the state have gathered. Among them are the outlaw motorcycle gangs, the so-called one percenters, and the other kind too, old blokes on bikes, like these men from the Vietnam Vets Club. There isn't actually any bikey war, there's no bikey war going on that they're trying to tell you. And another reason is, this is a free country, why should we be banned from King's Cross or any other place? 
They're concerned they've been wrongly tarnished by new laws banning colours from being worn in certain pubs and clubs in King's Cross. How does it make you feel? Well, you know, it gets me pretty cranky, really. I mean, uh, being a Vietnam veteran and these other boys are Vietnam veterans too, we fought for the country. Why should we be banned from there? Just because you're uh, wearing a patch or wearing colours doesn't mean to say you're a criminal. Tonight, the combined clubs have decided to ride en masse into the cross. They want to reclaim their territory. It's not long before the cops arrive. It feels strange being in a clubhouse when the boys in blue turn up. Mate, have you got a, you got a license on you? Mate, all we're doing is just making sure everyone's got a current license. All right, as long as your license is current and it says it's a rider's license. Do you think these new laws are going to prevent you from existing, from having clubs, from, yeah. from doing what you do? It just makes people more aware of what to do and how to ride their bikes and how to meet. But yeah. eventually it'll just get thrown out because it's not going to work. You say there are bad apples. What are you doing about the bad apples? They'll be turfed out soon. Mm. They'll be taken care of. Mm. I just want everyone to ride as one and just show the media and the public that it is, we're not just animals, we're safe people. Mm. We're just like every normal person. Yeah. We have wife and kids and we have family as well. Zach tells me it was him who called the cops. They knew they'd get checked and wanted it done before they ride off. I'm surprised by this relationship. Clive Small knows more about the relationship between cops and bikies than most people. He's a former assistant police commissioner in New South Wales. So this is not the worst of it? No, not at all. And uh, it will take, uh, uh, it will only take um, one or two occasions where an opponent bikey is killed or seriously wounded or a family member is hit in a drive-by to escalate it to a war. Mal Lanyon from the Crime Command knows exactly what he's dealing with. In my view, they are made up of a number of people who continue to commit criminal acts. Uh, a number of the groups in my mind are put together basically to put a veneer around criminal activity and basically to support each other in that criminal activity. Police have been taking on the bikies for decades, but it's a problem they can't seem to solve. The bikie gangs in Australia started in the 1960s. We didn't really hear a lot about them. We might have seen them driving around the streets but they were more of um, just a group of tough guys driving around on bikes. Everything changed on Father's Day in 1984, the Milpera massacre. Violent confrontation has left seven people dead in the raging gun battle between rival bike gangs, the Comancheros and the Bandidos. I hopped off my bike and I was confronted by a shotgun. And I looked over my shoulder and thought, you pointing that at me, you dickhead, you know? And then... I put my hands up like this, said, use these. And he went, nah. So I turned around, showed him I never had a gun, dropped my knife and my um, chain. And um, I put my hands up, said, use these. And he, sh he shot me. Felt the uh, bullet hit me here, blood spurt out there. And I called him and I said, you're a weak <laughs> Well, and then um, I leaned against the car and mate had a turn around and mate had a shotgun to me head and I said well, do it and he said not today snake <laughs> 